The collective of the Dreambox Studios is primarily known for the games of the Guacamole, one of the best metadoins of the 2010s, but the authors is clearly I do not want to dwell on the adventures of the Lujado. So, from time to time they stumble into experiments. Five odd years ago they released Severed, an action game in which the battles take place exclusively using the touch screen, and after Guacamole 2 uh, took uh, on the missions overhead action RPG, Nobody Saves the World, which has nearly two dozen playable characters. The main character is a Nobody. In the game's title. He wakes up in a tiny cabin and has no memory of how he got here. A few minutes later, nobody learns about the disappearance of Nostragamus, the greatest wizard, and a few more moments later becomes the main suspect. Fortunately, they manage to grab Nostragamus wand and escape captivity on a long journey across the big map. The protagonist's main goal is to save the world from the infestation, a, cont a contagion that can only be destroyed by shards of camps guarded by monsters that have appeared out of nowhere. He is the only one who can save the world from the abomination, a gem guarded by monsters that appears out of nowhere. He can, however, use his wand to turn himself into anything he likes, changing shape and gaining abilities. First, he transforms into a rat, and due to its size, it can penetrate narrow corridors, as well as a painfully bite and poison enemies. Then he becomes a warrior armored with a sword that does more damage with a less health, or an archer whose loaded arrows fly through enemies. Each form has quests, which increase in number as a story progress. They are, uh, they are all ability related. Wound 50 enemies with uh, this or that skill, won this or that matter with an acceleration skill, and so on. These mini quests increase the level of the form, which unlocks not only new playable creatures but also new skills. You can tell which is more important, since both are of interest. Shapes differ in many ways. Uh, one is suitable for close combat, another uh, leaves behind slowing slime. The third moves quickly, the fourth swims in water. And then abilities allow you to cope more effectively with enemies, and the tasks encourage you to try everything without exception. That, uh, that says the developers have managed to make almost every form interesting. When I got through the game, each new chapter became my favorite, even if at first the attitude was a negative. For example, the horse. In order to hit an enemy, you have to turn your back on him and kick him. It sounds uncomfortable, but there is an adventure. The horse pushes the targets away and they get extra damage if they hit a wall or other opponents. And with time it learns to gallop and can run into the crowd, damaging all affected monsters. Another example is the strongman. He moves slowly and his attacks looks very strange. He throws a bar in the selected direction, that is, he does not endure enemies immediately after pressing the button. But over time, the strong man becomes a very dangerous character. He accumulates strange, increasing the damage from the standard attacks, and also spins and punch everyone who is nervous. Abilities uh, can be upgraded to make them even more devastating. Some recover faster, others deal more da damage or require less mana. The same happens with special skills, which are also completely different from everyone. Someone restores mana by destroying an object in location, and someone's attack imposes status on targets. They poison, slow down, stun, and so on. The most interesting thing begins a few hours later, when nobody learns about the ability to transfer abilities between forms. Here nobody saves the world is fully revealed. Science many useful sk skills are allowed to, uh, to be given to anyone. The archer is able to shoot a rain of arrows, give the skill to the horse, zombies infect targets and after death they turn into the walking dead. With a couple of clicks, transfer the ability to the turtle, everything works like clockwork. 
There are no restrictions, upgrade farm and unlock countless combination of active and passive skills, some of which are also available in uh, local stores. This freedom all, uh, allows you to create a powerful builds. Even if one character is weaker than another, his skill can be extremely useful. For example, an egg is completely helpless until someone hatched from it. But at the first levels it gets a skill that heals the character when the button is held down, which is sometimes very useful. And if its disability is already available, it can still be made over cooler. The monk has the skill Holy Light. When activated, all targets on the screen take damage for a few seconds. And if you add a passive with which each you, you attack poisons the enemy, and if you draw another one that stuns, you can extremely endlessly. You have a lot of time to try everything, because the game is a far from short. The publisher who sent me a copy said 20 hours to complete, but I spent significantly more exploring each location in search of secrets and completing many side quests. The game is divided into regions connected by a path where monsters meet, and this path can lead either to cave or to a small settlement, or to one of the several dozen dungeons. Everything is created by hand and does not change with repeated passage, except for the dungeons, which is generated anew each time. At the same time, the condition in them remain the same. Somewhere the enemies are stronger or on the contrary die with one blow. Somewhere from opponents and broken barrels food that restores health does not drop out. Plus uh, there are enemies in the dungeon that require you to use the attacks of the specific element against them, otherwise they will not receive damage at all. Therefore each location requires primary preparation. It is important to choose both passive and active skills so as not complicate your task. Outside the dungeon is also full of entertainment. In the towns uh, there are guilds whose representative give a pack of tasks then can be fun challenges like hitting all the targets within a set time limit, racing as a horse or all sort of arcade mini games. Some character ask you to explore the world and look for dolphins or aliens that are not shown on the map. Entertainment occurs just like that, without pre-issued quests, for example, arenas in which you are locked up and forced to fight waves of enemies, not to mention the mana increasing fairies, the paths to which is not always obvious. In other words, there is a lot of content in Nobody Save the World. However, by the second half of the game, this becomes more of disadvantages. In particular, the process of pumping form is a bit Timing. Yes, it's interesting what a necromancer or monk can do, uh, which are among the last to unlock, but grinding kills with abilities for the sake of early easy tasks is no longer as exciting as it was in the beginning. Subsequently, when sophisticated quests are added to the usual quest, requiring you to trust of certain abilities and use them, the process becomes even more dreary. A large number of quests, dungeons and other things also delight less and less. The fact is the access to story test is blocked until you accumulate enough uh, special currency. It is given out both for completing form task and for the ordinary quest, and it can also be bought from a merchant, but doing the latter is pointless, so that you will have to earn currency honestly and away in order to level up the character. When I visited the story dungeon with a hero with a level below the recommended one, it was noticeably harder to complete them than when I did it with a level one. Well, my last complaint I is related to switching between forms. There is a button to quickly change the character holding it and you can up the selection wheel. But for some reason the game is not paused at this time, and since the arrangement of the form is the wheel change it, it's not possible to find the right character and there is in a second. Plus only 8 forms fit in the wheel. If you need some other one, you have to open the menu, go to the top with the form tree and select the desired hero here. here. Situation when you need to switch as soon as possible do not arise very often, but you still encounter inconveniences. However, everything described in the last paragraph does not negate the fact that nobody saves the world was a success. Both as a fun action game with a great visual style and as an interesting experiment. 
The idea of teaching some characters classes the abilities of other is not new, it has been common in JRPG science Final Fantasy Tactics, but it's still nice to see when everything works as it should and the idea is fully implemented. I'm not sure that the game will remain in memory until the end of the year, and it falls a little short of the hardest rating. At the same time, the drink box the Dreambox team did an excellent job, and the appearance of such a game in a game pass, and even on the day of release, is a wonderful gift.